Hello everybody, it's James Dans here, empowerment songwriter and trainer. And today I am interviewing a very special guest. She's a friend of mine and a female entrepreneur. And she is the UK's leading rejuvenation coach. And her name is Victoria Sheridan. Hello, Victoria. Hi, James. Thank you for how having you, me here today. Doing? It's great to have you here. So I'd like to ask you a few questions about what it is you do. So to begin with, what is a rejuvenation coach? Okay, well, um, as far as I know, I'm the only rejuvenation coach in the UK. And uh, that's why I'm the leading one. <laughs> so it's not something that people automatically understand, but it's about refreshing yourself. And refreshing yourself from a state of decay in the sense that when people are stressed, not only does um, the, the body shut down and go into a stressful state, it, the body starts dying. So the cells start disappearing and dying off. Oxidative stress kills cells. And generally on a, an emotional level, we um, start to shut down, we, we get agitated and angry or scared, frightened. And on a mental level, our brains stop thinking clearly and we don't have clarity to make future decisions. So as far as I'm concerned, the key is sleep and stress and living a healthy life and to refresh people so that once you have that lovely clarity, then you can decide what you want to do with your life and move forward and um, be healthy. You can regenerate yourself and regenerate the future. That's amazing. Excellent. <laughs> okay. So who do you sort of help? along those lines then do you work with particular clients or is it is it you know a range of people i do work with a range of people but my main forte is working with women who are older who are going through transition and who are actually looking at rejuvenating their looks and their appearance their health as well as their mindset um, women in particular relate to me because i went through something similar so i'm in my 60s now and I reached a point where I needed to change my life and I felt that I was being sidelined and not just by work but by family and um, not all that confident about securing further relationships or finding a partner and how was I going to maintain my income or improve my income. What was the future going to be like? It was a lot of questions for older women and at the same time there's the empty nest syndrome older women are having their children leave when they are already in their 50s. So it's quite scary for women these days as to who, who are you? You've got this longevity and yet what are you going to do with it? And is it going to be financially uh, enabling to be free and to have adventures? So those sort of people come to me because I, I can actually relate to them. But having said that, I do work with some children and some um, professionals. I work with a lot of business professionals, actually, who are stressed and strained and suffering with their health. So it's a bit broader. And, uh, mm. yeah, it just depends. Who, whoever's listened to this uh, will always be experiencing stress in some area of their life. And some, it becomes quite impossible to deal with and their health deteriorates. So maybe some of your sort of audience are relating to that aspect definitely yeah and I, I think um you know you've said a couple of interesting things there that although there might be certain people that you resonate with more or they resonate with you like you said there's lots of different people with different different types of stresses different problems etc but ultimately it's going to affect their body somehow isn't it it's going to affect both the mental side of things and the physical side of things so really it's finding out what their issues are what their problems are and then doing something about it so can you take me through a, a bit of a, a, a process you know what what exactly do you do so if someone was to contact you and say i, I need some help what would you generally do and, and what kind of results would be achieved from that as well mm. Okay, and so it depends on the person, what kind of person they are. Now, some people have uh, very fixed views on what stress is, and most people think it's an, a mental state, that they can't cope, that they, they're not coping mentally with things, and therefore that makes them feel bad. But um, it's, other people will come because they, 
they actually feel that they want meditation and, and to live a Zen life and that there's this idealistic view of how life should be. They want to be eating organic and, and improve the quality of their lifestyle and want tips on meditation to relax them that way. And some people have already tried a lot of things and a lot, some people haven't tried anything. Often a key factor is around sleep and feeling tired and fatigued. So when, when someone comes to me, I, I explore really what their previous experience is, what's leading them to it and how they're approaching it themselves already. And some people that might be wine or other, other substances. And um, exercise, you know, some people go to the gym and pound the gym for a while. So there's a wide variety of ways that people deal with stress. And when they come to me, it's because they, they realise that they actually can't, can't get beyond that. But what I like to do is dig deeper and find out what their real idea of their life is. What, you know, what are they looking for on a life level? Because if they're unhappy in any way, something might have happened. But in all cases, it's, it's a viewpoint of how they want to live their lives. And so if we start digging deeper into that and finding out what their real motivation for life is and helping them to find one if they haven't got one, then the rejuvenation starts to occur. And then they, they have an immediate mind up, um, upliftment. So for me, James, it's very important to give that immediate result in that first session. They need to know that what I'm going to do with them will give them immediate relief. So then we can build the resilience. And normally that's in, within about three sessions or preferably between eight to 12 sessions. So a three month program. And uh, yeah, it's uh, that's great. It's and, and, hmm. Yeah, a lot of relevant points there. So it's not, it's obvious that it's not a one size fits all approach. The fact is you're finding out about the clients and what their needs are so that you can obviously offer them advice, something that's going to work in the short term and obviously more longer term as well. And I love, I love the holistic approach that you've actually got. You know, this is important for people to know that one thing affects another thing, you know, so you need to look at different aspects of the body and different aspects of health, but taking into account the whole of health as well. And something on, on your website people can find out about, because you, your website is The Secrets Calm, isn't it? That's your business name. Yeah, dot com. And you say about, you've got the different programs, the Be Calm, the Be Happy, the Be Focused. So again, I imagine that these are obviously different programs you've got, but again, they're still very much individually tailored to each individual client. Is that correct? Yes. Well, yeah, somebody, somebody will come with acute stress. Something's happened. You know, some tragedy has happened or some, some devastating news like a redundancy or something really has thrown them on illness and they need immediate re relief. Um, somebody I was working with the other day was a teenage boy who has problems every time he goes to school after a half term. So it's just getting back into something. And some people feel like about similarly about their jobs. And um, so it is the, the be focused is a little bit like a remedy fix. It's, it's about focusing on the immediate problem and then giving them something they can do. For instance, if you were going to give a presentation or a talk and you were feeling stressed about um, giving that talk, but you didn't want your colleagues to know, then I would, Give you some quick techniques you can do that nobody else will see they, they the, the point with the secret car is that everything i give whether you're a 14 year old boy 17 year old boy um whether you're a mature 40 year old man going to give a presentation whoever you are the techniques work with everybody and it's a quick subtle um technique that well several of them but they're quick and subtle and they're simple, so they need a bit of practice, but in natural fact, some of them are so simple, we do them there and then. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful thing for me to be able to give someone pain relief in that sense. Mm -hmm. And then that gives the grounding then for further work. Um, the, Be Happy, the Be Happy program is the three month program. And uh, uh, what I noticed with a lot of my clients over the years was that within six to eight weeks, people have, have changed their lives. And uh, it's just that last little bit of comfort zone that they 
they want. And I always give them the offer of a free session later so that if they don't think they can't come back, they can come back and have a free session. And, so, and that's usually a couple of years later when something else has shifted in their lives. But um, the Be Calm is around sleep as well. But a lot of people will only want two or three sessions. They want to go away and practice it and, and maintain that on their own. And then the Be Focused is also for sports people. Um, the sports has been a major part of my work for quite a long time, although it went to the sideline when I was teaching and my career kicked off in that way. But I worked a lot with um, GP referrals for men who'd come with heart attacks and needed to calm and be calm. And then what happened was I worked with them on their um, performance levels. So I got into performance um, visualize, rehearsed visualization techniques so that they play through the, the way they're going to get the hole in one or the ball in the basket. And so um, that's popular as well. And um, for business people like yourself, you know, it's, you know, you've got targets, you've got projects and keeping that focus on that project and, and applying certain visualization techniques to, to secure the success by reprogramming your mind, your brain specifically. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's yeah. excellent mm, thanks. so for someone who doesn't know a lot about that is there a particular technique such as the visualization maybe that you could just share with us not necessarily in its entirety but just share with us so people get a little bit more of an idea of a process or, or are they all secrets um, no no nothing I do is, is new it's science it's yeah. based on science and also um, there isn't anything new in life. We just reproduce it in a way for that audience or this era, etc. Or it's received more easily or more difficultly, depending whether you're in a different country or different culture or whether you're in a different era. So what I'd like to do then, I think the, probably the best thing to do is to just go through some simple breathing exercises. Because mm -hmm. the first thing that happens with stress is you hold your breath. Mm -hmm. And you do that for certain reasons. So when, when you're in a stressful situation, you're, the reason I call myself a rejuvenation coach is because stress actually does deteriorate your cells and it causes your body to shut down. And if your body's shutting down over a long period of time through chronic, chronic stress, then you are permanently damaging your body. And the older we get, the less we are able to reproduce those cells. So, for example, when, when you're stressed, you're perceiving a threat. So it may not be the tiger, but it could be someone's coming to confront you. And you'll immediately think, right, how do I avoid this? So how do I run? What am I going to tackle this with? Am I going to fight? Or, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. I'll just sit here with my coffee and pretend it's not happening. So the, the fight, fight, the, sorry, the fight, flight and freeze are the main sy symptoms that people have. And so the best thing to do is to counteract what the body's doing. And in those situations, the body stops functioning. And as a lot of people know about stress, but a lot of people don't know about stress. Basically, you, because you, you want to focus on how to get out of here, or you're going to focus on that enemy and you're going to kill them. <laughs> Or you just can't do anything because you're just stuck. Mm. Then your brain focuses. It can't actually find solutions because it's only focused on where's the door <laughs> or where's my, where's my punching gear. <laughs> um, and so the, the heart rate lowers and uh, everything changes in your digestive system. Everything starts to lock down so that all your, your muscles for fight and flight will come into play. And in order for that to happen, your brain also has to become very focused, which means you can't find solutions. You can't articulate very well. You don't get clarity. So without what's going on internally, um, you're in a mess. So stress is not a good way to handle situations unless it is a real survival question. You know, if it's, if it's really, really important. But then also what happens, James, is that um, because you stop breathing and you start holding your breath, you do that to get the oxygen 
running around your body. But what happens then is you, your breathing is all out. So um, what I try and teach, and I'll share it with you now, is, is yeah. a very simple breathing technique that um, works from the lower diaphragm. So the, the lower diaphragm is the deeper breath, and it's like a, like a balloon opening with each breath in. And then hold the breath and then release it and the balloon deflates. And so when I go through that with people, one, they're applying their mind to a technique, they, they have a sense of control. But two, in that moment where the breath is held, that's when the oxygen is in the blood and actually get ma maximum pull into the blood. So you get maximum oxygen in the blood and then it will go to the heart, the lungs, and of course, your brain. So you become able to make clear decisions. You get more clarity. And uh, as, an, as a little side thing, people often think, oh, if you're meditating, you've got to let go of everything and you go into oblivion. Whereas in actual fact, when you're meditating and you're breathing deeply, you actually allow your mind to expand and your brain relaxes and everything's just all these lovely chemicals rolling around. You actually become more enlightened and more creative, which might be... Um, very useful for some of your audience who are interested in music and the creative arts mm. because relaxing your body and breathing like that actually does make a big difference. I don't know if you want me to go through through that for a few times. I don't mind. I think I think that that's fine in, in terms of as an initial introduction. Something very simple, and, and this is the important thing here that some people might be watching or listening and thinking, okay, so... What have I learned here that I've got to breathe a little bit, but it's amazing that that small thing, that thing that you've been doing for all of your life, breathing, most people breathe incorrectly. But when you become conscious of that and you consciously, when you feel yourself starting to get stressed and you deliberately start to breathe correctly, it's amazing what benefits it has, both in the short term. And then, of course, if you get good at using that in the long term as well. So yeah, I, I can I can relate to this myself. I know it's beneficial to me myself. I know something you said there in terms of when I want to create music or write lyrics, if I'm too if I'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed or too busy, then I, I struggle with that. So I need to be calm, I need to be chilled, I need to be relaxed to get get that done. Mm. And something I'd like to touch upon, Victoria, is I, having known you for a while, I know that you utilize these techniques yourself. You're not just someone that preaches to other people. I know that you've used these techniques yourself because I know you, you indicated this, that you were going through some challenging times in your life. And, and I didn't even know maybe the scale of that. But one thing that always came across to me was how, how calm and how relaxed you seem to be. So... I just wanted to, to, to touch on that again in, in terms of um, maybe there's a, a question there in terms of, you know, what, what have you really used in your life and, and what have been the results of that yourself? You know, there are several things. I started to do yoga in my bedroom when I was about 14 because I was going through a teenage stress. I was a bit depressed. And I didn't really know that it was all hormonal. I had nothing to be depressed about, but also... The, the thing that came from that was the breathing and relaxing and just trying to take control. But years later, when my life was upside down with divorces and different um, bereavements and different things happening in my early 20s, then I really needed to explore what, what was life about as well. So it was a deeper issue. But I learned a few techniques. I did a lot of the mindset stuff that's around now was way back in the 70s, early 70s. And... I realized that there's much more to human beings than we realize and that I didn't have to live the way and react to things the way that I was conditioned to reacting. And I, and I must admit, I was a bit confused by life because life was happening to me and I didn't know how to react and I learned. So I started meditating and using visualization techniques and breathing techniques. I didn't really follow a lot of yoga, but I did do some Tai Chi and I did do some martial arts. So I learned a lot about Chinese philosophies and I thought, no, there is another way to live life and, and other approaches to what life is about and the meaning of life. So there's two things there. One is I learned to control my body. And the second thing is I controlled my mindset. 
And I can remember after one bereavement, I spent a year and I really can't remember much that happened in, at that time, but um, I knew I just had to get through the year and I would make decisions after that year had finished. But during that time, I really um, found that the, the, the breathing and the meditation, etc., calmed my body and helped me to sleep because you just want to knock, knock yourself out. But it, it was a mindset. And I can remember thinking, I must have read it somewhere, you know, to change your thinking. And I think it was probably Joseph Campbell or someone like that. And I, I tried a lot just to watch my thoughts. So when I was walking, I would just watch my thoughts. When I was driving, I'd watch my thoughts. And I, and I started changing my thoughts. And, and one of the reasons I did it, I, I'll, I'll just throw this in. When I was pregnant with my first baby, you get this big bump and you start the waddle. <laughs> and I realized my feet were go going that way. And I thought, I'm not doing that. I'm dancer trained. I want to be that way and I want to be elegant. I trained myself to walk with my feet forward even though I was pregnant and wanted to waddle. And I thought, if I can do that when I'm pregnant and control my body and retrain my habit, then I can retrain my thinking. And so mindset and how you approach things isn't ever perfect. Life is not perfect, but what sustained me and why people think that I'm always calm and, and that is because I pretty much am. It's because it put, I put it in perspective. And when, when you've had all kinds of turmoil in your early life, not in my childhood, but in my um, early tw teens, 20s, then you realise that you survive and that you come through. So what makes you survive and come through things? What is it? And how can you still stay youthful? Well, I will tell you now, James, that meditation has kept me youthful. And uh, that's another reason why I'm a rejuvenation coach and I see it as so integral to being... Um, rejuvenating your life and, and being vital and having energy and and feeling that you can take on the world because you're, you've got a youthful approach is because stress is not only damaging to your health but it causes wrinkles it causes aging causes frowns causes tears you know low physical being and it's just um a choice really whether you want to live like that or whether you want to practice doing something completely different and that's what I did. <laughs> so, yeah. And then that sustained me all my life. Thank you for reminding me about the early years. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's, that, that's brilliant. So you are testament to it. And I'm really pleased that, you know, it's, it's working for you in, in terms of, yeah, being more stress-free yourself and helping other people to follow in your footsteps. So I'm sure that lots of people are being inspired by this. So how could someone contact you then if they're just interested in having a chat or finding out more or having some sessions with you? How, how's best to contact you? It's best to go to the website and have a look at the offers there and uh, just sort of send me a, uh, an email or joining through the messages there but you can also find me at red lipids golf club in kent but um, yeah i'm on facebook we've got the secret calm um facebook page just facebook groups secret calm and uh, yeah I'm, I'm just open to conversations just to find out and help I, I don't turn people away but i find i tend to attract people who are already wanting to find a remedy you know, people who, well, you know, you go on these Facebook chat rooms and you see all these different people talking, you can tell the ones that are just locked into it and are not ready to make a change yet. And there's something that stirs, isn't there? There's a little stirring inside and they're the people that, that relate to me and come to me. So if, if anybody is of that mindset where they're curious, then the curiosity is what leads to the answer. And I may have the answer. And if I don't, I will certainly signpost and refer to someone who does. You know, because sometimes, James, stress is not to do with um, a perceived fear. It's actually a physiological thing. You know, something that's, that's going on with the chemicals in the brain, the serotonin and the dopamine are not coming through, the oxyt um, oxy oxytocin levels are too high, etc. cetera. Um, so it's... it's being willing to pass people on and refer them to that they get the the rewards and the results that they want 
So, sorry, I've rambled on again, but basically... No, no, that's great. Again, it just shows people that really they should take action and at least at least be curious, at least find out, um, you know, and, and it also shows that integrity is a big value of yours as well, Victoria. So Thank I think that's, yeah. that's really important. If, if people are working with you that, you know, um, they can trust you and, um, you know, gain, gain rapport with you. So, no, that, that is amazing. Is there any... Um, in One one piece of advice put you on the spot now in a sentence one piece of advice that you would give to people any ideas the, the first up. piece of advice regarding dealing with life would be to you're born breathing and keep breathing and yeah if, if you can just stop and breathe it, it will change the way your brain reacts to your body and some of the techniques I've been showing you will actually send you to sleep. So I do help people with sleep. So if you're interested, anybody come along to thesecretcalm.com and I'll share the secrets and nobody will know what you're doing. They won't guess what you're doing. It's all very, very uh, subtle. <laughs> brilliant. That is brilliant. So take that advice, get curious, take action. And uh, yeah, that's amazing. Thank you ever so much, Victoria. Thank and you. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye for now.